All right, so folks were saying they could beat NBA teams, the former Fab Five team, Zion Williamson, and the Duke Blue Devils come crashing back down to earth, suffering their first loss of the season despite a late comeback. Stephen, I know you thought they were going to go undefeated. Do you think you overrated this team? Yes, I did, but I didn't say they were going to go undefeated. I said it's possible they could. That's number one. Let's be very, very clear. Number two, my whole point is I think that also we, we, we got a little bit beside ourselves because of the incredible athleticism of Zion Williamson. R.J. Barrett is big time. I think he's the best player on the team. A couple of things. Emotionally, I think Coach K was right. They weren't ready. Defensively, they, 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 they were a bit soft. But more importantly than that, here's the biggest reason why I think we may have overrated them. And when I say overrated, I mean they're still an elite team. I think they still will compete for the national championship. I think they'll still win 30 games at least this season. I don't, I'm just talking about the manner in which we were talking about them. What really resonated with me about Duke is the fact that Gonzaga went to zone. And I watched these guys struggle with their perimeter shooting. Barrett shot 9-25 from the field. 9-25. Zion Williamson only took one, one three-point shot and he missed or whatever. But I saw hesitancy. I saw reluctance. And I believe in the collegiate game, especially the collegiate game, they are quick to take away that man-on-man kind of encounter. They will go zone because all things are not created equal, more so in college than it is on the NBA level. So if you got a superior athlete, Max, you notice like a Zion or R.J. Barrett or whatever, cats on Gonzaga, even though they had a couple of nice players, by the way, that kid Norville is nice, uh, uh, you know, and I'm Hachimura. Hachimura, that's him. You know, he had about 20 yesterday as well. I'm saying from an athletic standpoint, from an ability standpoint, you can't expect some of those players to be able to compete with them if they man up. But when you go to a zone and you force them to get, in, to get into the teeth of a defense through dribble, dribble penetration as opposed to a pass, you force them to launch three-point shots. All of a sudden, Duke didn't appear nearly as confident as they looked in the first four or five games this season. And that's what stood out to me more so than There anything. is so much here, first of all, the regular season in college basketball is back because of this Duke mm-hmm. team and this Gonzaga team. Look, let's start with, let's start with was Duke overrated? No. Mm-hmm. Duke is incredibly talented. Mm-hmm. And the reason when I, I thought. I that, though, Max. I'm saying they could beat the Cavs. That was the conversation. That was the reason. They could, they could beat the Fab Five. They say that about the UNLV, who didn't win the title yes. the year they were saying that. Of course, the college team's not going to beat a pro team. But, but we understand the hyperbolic mm-hmm. comments or how impressed people are with the athletes on the team. Let, let, me, let me get back to this point. Um, um, I thought not only might they go undefeated, Stephen A., mm-hmm. I thought that they might go undefeated and win it all, like really go undefeated. That almost never happens. It hasn't mm-hmm. happened in decades. But I don't think I was overrating them. I think the difference with this team and teams in the past that we've said uh, these great one-and-done Calipari teams, Mm -hmm. that maybe we have overrated here and there, is that this is one of those great one-and-done teams. This is the kind of team that reminds you, not that they were one-and-done, but they were super talented of the Fab Five or or, or UNLV running Rebels, great teams, where or what some of these Calipari iterations of these these teams. We're looking, but they're coached by Coach K. Mm -hmm. The difference is... This is the guy who's finally playing the one and done game, mm-hmm. who always beat the one and who always beat the super talented teams. Now you're giving this guy the super, super, super talent. This is what we lost sight of. Mark Few is right there with the best of them. He has made four consecutive Sweet 16s. Mm-hmm. Two of those times he was in the Elite Eight, went to a Final Four, went to a Final Four. He's in a great WCC conference. Who get that. was Brad Stevens before Brad Stevens was Brad Stevens? That is correct. Who has a who has like a mid major. Who, who is as good as the big boys and is playing with upperclassmen, he is now the Coach K to Coach K's one-and-done recruiting class style team. Now, Coach K understands this. That's why he's telling these guys, you know what the most important thing for us this year is? The set shot. We, you need to live in the gym and hit knockdown threes because the danger with this Duke team is everyone can take his man. Can you move the ball? Can you hit the open shot? It's still early. It's November. It doesn't mean anything yet. I believe that we have not overrated this team, and they will knock down those shots when the ready, time are comes. Are you ready for this? You brought up Mark Few, and I was going to go there, but not by bringing him up. I was going to point out how yesterday, and of course it's just one game, it means nothing because this man's resume is as impeccable as it gets. Yesterday was not the brightest day for Coach K. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you why. One agent just texted me. Several of them have said this to me. 
you play through Cam Reddish. This kid, we've been talking about R.J. Barrett, who's the best player. We've been talking about Zion Williams, who's a freak athlete and big time. Cam Reddish is also an A-lister that you recruited, a freshman, one of those trios of freshmen. This guy shoots 40, 44% from three-point range. Why in the hell is R.J. Barrett taking 25 shots and Cam Reddish is taking nine? Mm -hmm. You cannot have that kind of discrepancy if you're the Duke Blue Devils because Barrett is shooting 31% from three-point range. He is a baller. He is a player. He's not, quote, unquote, a shooter. Reddish is one of those guys that has the potential to be a red ick. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Guys like that, 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 that came out of Duke, the Trajan Langdon's of the world, and people like that, they came out of Duke as sharpshooters. They're viewing Reddish in that fashion. You cannot have a 16-shot differential between Reddish and well, Barrett I don't mind, and expect I don't to be mind guys cannot take, do that. I don't mind guys taking open shots. The whole thing is you guys have to hit these shots, but you also have to move the ball, and you have to have court vision and, yeah. and that kind of sensibility. But, these are but, young players. But you know this. Freshmen. But you know this. There are times you have to – that's why I brought up Coach K. You have to find the shooters. In other words, yeah. you can't sit up there and go like this. Well, you know what? It's, 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 Gonzaga's a good team. They're exceptionally well coached. They play excellent defense. This guy is arguably our best shooter. But you know what? They're really keying on him, so you other guys are going to have to make shots. No, you've got to get open shots for a reddish. Yeah. You have to find and a way because he's that good. He's minute. that good of a shooter compared to anybody Look, else. We you know have. the story you have is to give him the ball. We know the story is Duke, the given ball. the coach, given the talent he now has, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, in every sport, like we'll, to get to it later, the Bears are zigging while everyone else is zagging. Right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes that team has a chance. And if you're Gonzaga, if you're Mark Few, you must Gonzaga must zag while everyone else zigs to have a shot, mm -hmm. and they're doing it. These are, these are, uh, ex these, this is a well oiled machine, a very well coached. Well, they were playing um, with house money. Everybody's team. talking about Duke. Everybody's bloviating about Duke and all of that stuff. You're in Maui, all of this other stuff. Gonzaga, listen, Gonzaga ain't going to go undefeated. But no. the point is, the point that I'm trying to make to you is that they were playing, that good of a team playing with house this money could be the is the best thing that disaster. happens to Duke. Sure. Right. But, sure. like, you think about a team that goes to. Sure. Like, in, in, in that level school, going to four straight Sweet, sweet 16s, mm -hmm. you know, in a tournament, it, it is a little luck-based, right? When you get to four straight Sweet 16s, when you advance past yeah. that a couple times. They're usually a when top you get, in the West, though, man. Okay, still, uh, when West. you get to the they finals, yep. you know, what's the next step right. for Gonzaga? Listen, I'm happy we're talking college basketball. I grew up on Big East basketball. It's fun. Yep. You're right. It's back. Coming up next, do the guys.